Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna be etching a neck plate. That's the part that goes right here. Not all guitars have these, but a lot of them do. We're gonna be etching that with a logo. Now, traditionally big companies or mass produced companies will do this using a CNC machine or a laser type of engraving. But this is a really, really good way to do this from home. It's cheap and it's easy. So first off, I'm gonna tell you what you need and then we'll get into it, let's go. All right, so please don't mind the messy bench, but what you're gonna need is a neck plate. Now this has to be metal, it can't be a painted neck plate or anything like that. Um, this one here is just a chrome metal, so that should work perfectly fine. The other thing you're gonna need is something to make a template for your logo or whatever you're putting on your plate. So I luckily have a vinyl cutter, so I was able to, you might not be able to see that, but um, I've cut my logo out on the vinyl there, so it should look like that once we peel it off. Um, if you don't have this, they're really easy to get, like find someone on Etsy or anywhere on the internet that can cut something out for you with vinyl. Um, otherwise, you can find another way of making a template. If you're really good with your hands, you could put electrical tape over the whole thing and then carve or cut out your shape, design, whatever you want. Um, but yeah, vinyl cutter is a really good way to do that. The next thing you're gonna need is a container or tub large enough to fit your neck plate in. We need some salt and we'll need some water. And we're gonna want enough water just to basically fill the tub so we can completely submerse the neck plate. And then another thing we're gonna need is just some electrical wiring, just some kind of wiring like this. And you're gonna need an adapter or a charger of some sort or a charged car battery. So I've got this car battery charger here, it does a variety of different amps. Um, I think something between five and 15 amps is best or five to 10 amps, but I'm gonna use this on the eight amp setting. Like I said, you can always also use a charged car battery or you can buy an AC adapter, cut the ends off and use the positive and negative wires from that. Um, you'll also need some electrical tape and you'll need a sacrificial piece of metal that we'll be using later in the process. So that can be anything, just a piece of junk metal. Doesn't really matter what it is. This is galvanized steel. I've never actually used it with this before. I've usually got different types of steel laying around, aluminum, stainless, and things like that. Um, but I just found this, I wanted to give this a go. This is galvanized, but from what I've read, it should be fine. So I think that's about it. Let's get started. <music> First thing we need to do is make a template for our etching. I'm lucky enough to own a vinyl cutter, so I have cut my logo out on some adhesive vinyl. If you don't have access to a vinyl cutter, there are plenty of people who can do this pretty inexpensively. I've seen hundreds of people offering this service on Etsy for a very reasonable price. The other option is to make a template out of something else you can think of. It must be waterproof though. Just remember, any part of the metal that is exposed will be etched. So if you have gaps where water can enter, it will be etched. With my design, I want the M logo to be etched, so I'm going to apply my vinyl to the plate and then remove the M logo from the vinyl. Now, we need to make sure that we tape some wire down somewhere on the plate. I'm gonna tape mine to the back of the plate. This is what will allow the electrical and chemical process to work. As I said earlier, any area that isn't masked off will get etched. So we're going to cover the rest of the plate in some electrical tape, leaving only the logo exposed. Now we're going to fill our container with water. Add enough water so that it covers the plate as much as possible. Once we've added our water, we're going to add heaps of salt. The more salt, the better as it helps conduct the electricity. We are now going to grab our sacrificial piece of metal and tape a wire to it or clamp it. This piece of metal can be left exposed as it will not be etched during the process. Now we can add the plate and our sacrificial metal to the container. Keep them as far apart as possible. Now that we have both the plate and other metal in the container, we need to connect them up. Connect the positive wire to the metal we want to etch and connect the negative wire to our sacrificial piece of metal in the container. Make sure the piece you want to etch is facing up. I wanted to try this with a new battery charger that I recently got, but unfortunately it didn't work. It cuts the power when it thinks there is a full battery, and because it can't detect any considerable power draw, it switches off. So I used a jump starter instead. It's probably easiest for most people to just use a charged car battery. Turn on or connect your power supply and you should see bubbles start to form as the process begins. It should be relatively safe, but just to be cautious, turn off or disconnect your power supply before touching any of your parts or the water. You should also wear gloves when handling the parts or the water. I'd personally also wear a mask for safety too. You can let this process go for as long as you like. Just be careful to not let it go for too long though as the etching might start eating under your template when it gets too deep. I usually turn off my power supply and check my plate every five to 10 minutes. 
If your water is starting to get really dirty, you can dispose of it properly and restart the process again. Please make sure to dispose of this contaminated water properly. Speak to your local waste management to find out the best way of doing this. Once you're happy with the etching, turn off your power supply and remove your part from the container. Unmask it and wash it off with some water. Mine hasn't actually come out perfect. I should have left it a little bit longer as there is still some metal that wasn't etched all the way through. I'm going to give it a cut with some cutting compound and then a polish to see if that helps. It looks a bit better but I should have left the part in there for 10 minutes instead of 5. Alright that's it. That's all there is to it. It's come up pretty nice. If you can see that. I reckon I could have left it in a little bit longer. There's a few little lumps and bumps where it looks like it didn't quite etch as deep as other places but all in all it's come up really really nice great for a home job it's probably never going to look as good as um, something that's been laser engraved or cnc'd or something like that but if you want to do something like this at home it's come up awesome so i hope you enjoyed this hope it helps don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video thanks very much for watching mm -hmm.